Trent Alexander-Arnold how Revival Changes Football One of the more curious and unsquashable debates of recent years has been the question of whether Trent Alexander-Arnold would be better off as a central midfielder, or, perhaps more accurately put, whether we would be better off with Alexander-Arnold as a central midfielder. Personally, I've never quite been able to get past the perversity of wanting to unmoor one of England's few genuinely world-class exponents in any domain, like yeah, David Attenborough's all right at presenting nature documentaries, but how might his skill set lend itself to the Radio 1 drive time slot? But you can see the logic. Alexander Arnold is a phenomenal passer of matchless range and creativity. And of course, this is a proposal which is inseparable from its wider context, specifically, the idea of the English midfield as a howling wasteland parched of craft and control, ingenuity and influence, strewn with big match tumbleweeds and the skeletons of major tournaments past. The idea of inserting Alexander Arnold, with his vitality, his lush imagination, his rainmaking right foot, into that dead zone. That was the real appeal of it. Anyway, the issue finally seems to have dropped off the radar, partly because the emergence of Harvey Elliott and the continued excellence of Thiago Alcantara means there's not much of an opening at Liverpool, partly because, for the first time in ages, England have an exciting crop of young midfielders, and partly because Alexander-Arnold is so damn good as he is. But there's also something else going on here, I think. You know that old saying about the mountain and Muhammad? Well, rather than move to the most influential position on the pitch himself, Alexander-Arnold has brought the most influential position on the pitch to him. In 2017-18, the season where Alexander-Arnold established himself as a first-team regular, full-backs played only an ancillary role in moving the ball through the lines and creating chances. Sure, they might chip in, but the real creative, passing nexus of the team was the central midfield. Accordingly, the top 20 for progressive passes, defined by Statsbaum as completed passes which move the ball into the box or at least 10 yards towards goal, was dominated that season by midfielders, with only two full backs in the top 20. It was a similar story for expected assists from open play, with Kevin De Bruyne, Christian Eriksen, Masoud Ozil and Cesc Fabregas in the top 10, and no full-back higher than Walker in 15. Looking at those tables for each season since, you can track the gradual mission creep of the full-back. This season, Alexander-Arnold leads the league in open play expected assists, Manchester City's Joao Cancelo is third, Sergio Reguilon of Tottenham Hotspur is eighth and Liverpool's Andy Robertson 14. There are seven full-backs among the top 20 progressive passers, and while Alexander-Arnold, Cancelo, and Robertson are in the top four, perhaps even more significant is that Brighton Hove Albion, West Ham, Crystal Palace and Aston Villa also have a full-back on the list. This shift would probably have happened anyway, but there is no doubt that Alexander-Arnold has driven it, accelerated it, given the slow march of human progress that triple espresso shot of genius. Reflecting on his role in the great Manchester United teams of the late 1990s and early 2000s, Gary Neville once said his job as a right-back was, like a servant, support from behind, pass the ball and serve then you'd start to overlap. Compare that narrow brief to Alexander-Arnold's expansive vision of his role. If you look at chances created, he told last month, a lot of them are coming from that inside channel rather than the wing. They are all coming from the width of the penalty area. It is a nice area to create from, as you are a lot closer to the goal. The defenders have got a lot less time to react to it and you can penetrate a lot more. By daring to occupy more central areas and attempt the sort of ambitious vertical passes which the functional touchline huggers of Neville's era would have avoided for fear of a bullocking, Alexander-Arnold has redefined the parameters of the position, and in so doing changed some of the game's basic architectural principles. Call it the trend on. This begs the question, if full-backs are operating in more central areas, playing a key role in moving the ball forwards and shouldering much of the creative burden, where does that leave central midfielders? I think we're beginning to see how that domino effect might play out this season, in the shape of three of England's most exciting young number eight. Take Connor Gallagher. The Crystal Palace midfielder, on loan from Chelsea, carries a huge goal threat. No true central midfielder has scored more than his seven non-penalty goals this season. He lives in the box, he averages 2.9 touches in the attacking penalty area for 90 minutes, an extremely high number for a central midfielder on a mid-table team, putting him in the 92nd percentile among midfielders in Europe's major leagues, according to FBREF.com. He is also a relentless pressing machine, engaging the ball carrier 24.5 times per 90 minutes, up there with the likes of Chelsea's Matteo Kovacic and Liverpool's Naby Keita. The one thing that Gallagher doesn't do much of is passing, something which has traditionally been considered the definitive skill for a central midfielder. He attempts only 37 passes per 90 minutes and completes just 2.0 progressive passes, an exceptionally low figure, which ranks him in the third percentile among midfielders in Europe's major league. When it comes to passing the ball forward, 
he's in the same ballpark as William Trustecombe, the Watford centre-back, or Sun Hyung Min, the Tottenham striker. Gallagher is an extreme example, but two other English midfielders have a somewhat similar profile. Aston Villa's Jacob Ramsey might be even more of a goal threat than Gallagher. He has five already this season, from only 1,433 minutes. He ranks highly for pressures and penalty box touches too, but attempts even fewer passes than Gallagher, 35 per 90 minutes, and while his average of 3.3 progressive passes is superior, it's still on the low side. Jude Bellingham of Borussia Dortmund is a more prolific passer than Gallagher or Ramsey and has the ability to play the ones which matter most. Six assists this season puts him in the Bundesliga's top 10. But his overall passing numbers are modest for a first-choice midfielder on a team who average over 60% possession, 49 attempted, of which 3.75 progressed the ball significantly. Yet Bellingham's penalty box touches are sky-high, 3.4 per 90 minutes, putting him in the 97th percentile, and he's an incredibly active defender, averaging 22.5 pressures and 24 blocks, the latter a figure which would put most centre-backs to shame.